if you want to call half the country a threat or terrorists, might want to think about why we're a threat. Is it because you're doing a, an awesome job? Because if you were doing an awesome job, we just keep going to work, keep watching TV, keep going hunting and fishing, and doing everything we normally used to do. But you're not doing a good job. You're not representing us. You're not following the Constitution. We want you to follow the Constitution to a T. We care about the Constitution. This is why we like Trump. One of the few politicians in my lifetime that actually wanted to follow the Constitution. He's not a perfect man. Nobody is. We'll never find one. But at least he cared about America. You, on the other hand, I can't tell who you care about more. I do know you care about power and you care about money lying in your pockets, sending our money overseas. You don't think that we know that when you send money overseas, it's going to come back in some form to you and the rest of the guys in government? Come on, Joe. You're the threat. This is why we're angry. And if half the country, and I guarantee you it's way more than half the country, is upset, you're not doing your job right. You're not representing us. Try and take our free speech, First Amendment, Second Amendment. You violated damn near all the amendments. And if I looked hard enough, I could probably find you did violate all of them. You're the one that doesn't care about the Constitution. And the rest of the people that support you, they don't care either. And before you come hate, you might want to do a little bit of research on World War II and the lead up and how all that happened. It didn't just start overnight. There was a propaganda campaign for a long time saying that the Jews were bad. What does it sound like they're doing right now? Saying that half the country is a threat. He's not sowing unity, he's sowing division. And I don't care, even if Trump got up there and was sowing division, I wouldn't support that man either. Because we're America. We need to be united. And you're dividing. And that's a fact. Everybody can see it. Even your supporters can see it. They just overlook it. Shalom. Kahlaimla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukat Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you on another lesson, can you not discern the times? So we're definitely in a changing of the seasons. The ending of the current age under Esau, Edom, and then the birth of a new nation under Jacob, the dawn of the ushering in of a new age, a new rulership, a new kingdom. So the changing of the seasons is transpiring. And only the hopeful elect can see that, can see the signs, can see the signs and discern the times. So he said, Let's go here. I'm going to go to Luke. <clears throat> he said, Joe Biden is bringing division. So the Lord is beginning to visit the earth in which he made. Matter of fact, we'll go there first. And I'm going to show what that means. <clears throat> Lord willing. Second Ezra chapter 9. Let's go to verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before. 
Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, that's what we're seeing. Kingdom against kingdom, nation against neighbor, nation against neighbor, and neighbor against neighbor. Nation against nation, excuse me. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So he's visiting the world in which he made. Let me just go back to that. I want to go to, there's a key point right here. Second Ezra 9, verse 2. Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So there's a reason we're seeing nation against nation. Neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother, kingdom against kingdom. Maybe I won't get tongue-tied and tongue-twisted again. See, there's a reason that we're seeing that, that spirit of division. He's visiting the world in which he made. Let's go to Luke 12, verse 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. I will begin to visit the world which I made. So the spirit of Shai is dwelling with us, supping with us, a hopeful elect, bringing together or building the house of David, and deconstructing the tabernacles of Edom. I know everybody can see that. <coughs> Let's read that again. Luke 12 and 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. Wives against their husbands, and vice versa. Children against their parents. Verse 53. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. There was a speech that Joe Biden did probably about a year ago. He said he even encouraged children to report their parents. And that's a big moral issue, an ethical violation. Kids get disciplined by their mother and father. So you got to be an absolute dumbass, creepy, sleepy Joe to say that. Only a reprobate would say something like that. Yeah, he said, even if you children detect that your parents are radicalized, so to speak. That's utter madness. Let's go to Mark 3. Mark 3. Edomites were never meant to rule. They were used as a whipping, a whipping stick, a rod of correction against the Israelites. 
but they're not apt to rule. Mark 3. <clears throat> so the context of Mark 3. Yahweh Shai was being accused as being a devil worshiper or doing the works of Beelzebub. So let's see where I want to start here. Let's go here to verse 22. Mark 3 and 22. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. Which is a reprobate statement. Why would a devil cast out devils? Verse 23. And he said, Mark 3 and 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. So Esau is divided against Esau. The left against the right. Conservative against liberal. And globally, globally, on the global scale, you have the West against the East. Mark 3 and 23 Go to 24. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against Satan, verse 26. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but have an end. So Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. So there is a spiritual demon, Satan, and there's also physical manifestations of the spiritual demon, Satan, the Edomites that are doing his bidding on the left-hand side. So they are divided. Satan means adversary of God. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. So the end is manifest. That's what we're witnessing right now. And we're in the last leg of the revised Roman Empire under Edom. Edom is interchangeable with Rome, which is interchangeable with beast. So we're under the last beast. The great red dragon, pursuant to Revelations 12, verse 3 and 4. Mark 3, verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind a strong man and then he will spoil his house. So we're under the house of Edom. So the strong man is the prince of the power of this world that must be cast out. Edom, Esau. So the primary target when Yahweh comes back pursuant to Isaiah chapter 63 and Isaiah chapter 34 is Esau, Edom. 
as the strong man of this world, this kingdom, this age, the prince of the power of the air. So the Edomites are very much divided, without a doubt. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, or Kwakadash, Barakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Pam Yasharala, and the Bad Babal. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.